Hi there, it's Karen here. Welcome back to my channel and today is hopefully, I think, <laughs> I think it will be the final part of Spring Journal. Um, I've got to the point where I can hardly fit any more in anyway, so there's not a lot more to do. I just want to do a bit of decorating and make it just, just give it a little bit of um, zhuzhing up around the edges and here and there where it looks like it needs, needs a little bit of extra something. Um, and I've done a certain amount of prep work on this just so that we don't spend too much too much time on it. But before I start, um, I had a request from one of my lovely subbies, um, Sue, I think it was you, I hope you're watching, to um, show you how to how I made one of my pockets. And I think it, I think I know which one she means. She just mentioned the, the pink pocket. Um, so I believe she was talking about this pocket, this one here. Um, I'm assuming that's the one she was talking about because I think most of the others I've done on camera um, for the journal so I think she must mean this one because it is basically pink although by the time you've added all the all your bits and bobs it um, it looks a bit you know it's, it's a bit more covered up but I thought I would show you how to make that just because I, I really like this pocket I have used it quite a few times over the years well a couple of years that I've been doing this um, and I thought maybe I'd show you how to do it. I didn't come up with this. I got the whole thing from, uh, I got the idea from uh, Pam at the Paper Outpost. She was one of the first video uh, YouTubers I watched and I used to make a lot of her things, a lot of her book page pockets. She did a whole series on making things out of book pages and I just sat and worked through them all with her. Um, and I think they're brilliant. So a lot of them I still use and this is one of them. So I'll just show you. And I always have to remind myself how to do it because I always forget how I did it. Um, but I have done that. <laughs> so you need a, a reasonably good sized piece of book page. I mean, you can do this with um, uh, digital, with, you know, um, copy paper. I have tried doing it with thicker copy paper and it's always best to double side it because the way you fold it, you see both sides. So um, normal copy paper is best because when I used the thicker one, it really made it too bulky. I did use it in a journal, but it was really rather a bulky pocket, so I, I, I realised that's not a good idea. Um, but generally what I do is I've actually got a bunch of these in my, in my to-do box, just ready-made up out of book page. Um, and then you can just decorate them as, as and when with, with whatever papers you want to do, which is what I've done with that pink one. But I'd done it before, uh, before I'd done it a while ago, um, just because I, I thought that was a pretty paper to use, and I, I just had a go at decorating one. So they are a little bit fiddly because you have to do all the little bits, but it's quite it's quite nice when they're done, and they are really um, really effective pockets. I think they're great. I really like them, but they're really really simple to make. Um, and even though they're really simple to make, I always forget how to do the first fold. Once I've done the first fold, I know what I'm doing. So what you need to do is take your book page and turn it that way. You take this corner. I hope I'm still doing this right. And you fold it like that so that you've got these two points opposite each other and you've got a straight line going across there. So you end up with like a little, little boat shape or something like that. So that's the shape you end up with. So it's a simple fold, but it is. It's, sometimes it's the one that foxes me. So you, you just fold, take the, this corner down here and you kind of turn it and fold it so that it so it goes up and ma more or less matches this corner up here. So let's get it about right. Doesn't it's not doesn't have to be exact, but you end up with a shape like this. And then I'm trying to think if you, no, I think you turn it over. Do you do that? No, you do it the other way. <laughs> Even now, I can't remember how to do it. I think you could do it either way. That's not right, is it? It must be this way. Turn it that way. Or do you turn it that way? Yeah, turn it this way. Okay. <laughs> it's a really simple pocket, but somehow it often seems to fox me. So I think sometimes it depends which way you do it. You tuck it, you take the two sides and tuck whichever one is being as folded and I think sometimes, I think you'll do it either way, tuck one into the other, like that. And I've obviously ended up with this one the other way around. So I don't think it matters which side you fold in. So you end up just 
folding it across, tucking it in. You just need to glue this bit at the bottom, just to glue it shut. But then you've got pocket here, pocket here, one here, one here, one behind here. And that's it really. It's two three, two folds, but they're not they're not <laughs> they're not as simplest. I mean it seems a simple fold, it should be a simple fold. I'll do another one, just to kind of reiterate how to do it because you can never have too many of these things. I'll just get another one away. These are, these are all pages I've torn out of my old encyclopedias that I had as a child. So they're probably vintage because they're as old as me. Well, not quite as old as me, but old enough to be vintage anyway. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. It, it always does that when I... Hang on, I've got to it my hand. I'm just going to trim off this this edge here where I where I tore it, just because I think it's better to have a nice smooth edge. So I'm going to do it again. So I think you could do it either way. You could do it this way as well. And maybe that's why I had it the wrong way. I had it the other way around. Fold it across that way. It doesn't really mean, matter which way you do it. So you've got the two points more or less equal. Turn it round. Fold it, yeah, that's what it is. I think I just folded it the other way. Doesn't really matter. And that's where it confused me, because I know I always fold it this way and tuck it in on this side. Let's just get, get it flattened down. There we go. So you've got, you've got it going the other way. I didn't even know I could do it the other way. <laughs> the other way around, but uh, obviously it can be done. It's very straightforward. It's basically two folds, that's all it is. So you've got two there. One folded in this way, one folded in this way. But they're both pretty much the same, you get the same pockets. Easy peasy. And then all you've got to do is cover them. Or you could do whatever you like. I know Pam, um, I would cover these because I don't think these book pages are particularly attractive to, to leave as they are, but um, sometimes she just would do a little bit of inking around the edge, perhaps put a bit of a lace, um, and maybe a little bit of something on this bigger piece and leave it as it is. If you've got some really nice old book pages to use and you don't want to cover them, that would be even easier. Um, it's just that I tend to use these because they're quite strong. And I've got loads of them, um, but they're not particularly things I want to have on show. So I'd always cover these, I'd always cover these. But there we are, that's that's how I made that one. And of course, once you've covered it, you know, you can do it in any style you like, you know, you can do it to match any any journal. Um, and I just happened to have that pink one and I thought it went well in this particular journal, so I used it. But now I've got all these to cover now, haven't I? I better have a little session, I think, just covering them with pretty things and then I can use them in other journals. But today we are concentrating on this little baby which is really... Oh, the other thing I was going to say, I was just going to show you this. This was my the one I did to remind me how to do it. I used a whole piece of um, copy paper, and as you can see, it's huge. It, I mean, you can have it. I mean, it would fit on a page. I will show you. It does fit just, but it's a bit of a, a big... And then you've got to fill it. It makes it really bulky. So I tend to not go for something quite as big as this, but you could always cut it down. And remember to double side your, pa your, your, uh, your paper if you're going to use a digital. Because that would then save you all the covering. So that would be another option and possibly an easier one. But yeah, that was just thought I'd show you that to show you how big it is if you use the whole piece of copy paper. Right, so let's go back to the beginning of this. <laughs> um, and what I want to start with, I found in the kit and I think it's probably the Artie Mays kit but I'm not absolutely sure but there were a lot of quite a lot of pieces of ephemera in that kit and one of them was this piece which said spring I can't remember if I showed you this before I know I showed it in one of the videos but then I may have edited it out as what part of my editing process I have a feeling I did so you may well have not seen this but um I just I saw it and I thought well actually that would probably go quite nicely on the front of the journal um and all I've done is I got out my um, glossy accents. I can never remember what that's called. I had this really old bottle of glossy accents. It was so old it was almost going yellow. 
and I wasn't sure I could even get any out, but I managed to squeeze out enough and just cover that. It's backed on some cardstock, quite thick cardstock, and then um, and then I glossy accented it. So it's actually just got a slight shine to it, but it's not super shiny, and I quite like that. It's more of a more of a satin finish than a silk finish, if you like. And then a couple of little blobs of Nouveau drops. I think it's um, like a copper copper penny. Nouveau drops to make it look like Brad's and I really like that so I want to pop that on the front of the book because I think that just finishes it off. I could, I was thinking to put it on here but it would, if you put it in the centre of there it looks off centre to here so I thought if I put it up here and centralise it to the whole book it, it kind of disconnects it from this and I can do it in the centre which I think it looks better anyway. So that's where I'm going to put it, I'm not going to put anything behind it um, oh, I'm, I'm reaching over there for my glue and I've been rearranging things in my trolley which is usually right next, well it's right next to me and usually my, my little pot of glue, this, is in the top of the trolley but I've been doing a bit of reorganising so now it isn't so I should probably keep doing that until I get used to the fact that I keep it, I've got it here now and it may not end up in that position but I've, uh, I'm doing some reorganising of my laces and I think they're going to take up the whole of the top of the trolley So I'm just going to pop this on as my starting point for finishing this journal. And there we go. I think it looks about central. Hold it there for a minute. I just felt it needed that little something to say what it was really. Something on the front. And that I think that works really well, like that. Okay. So let's go into the book now. And um, I have made a few um, a few little bits and pieces um, off camera because they're things that I've done before on camera, um, like snippet roll and ruffles. I've I've um, I've made them before, and everybody knows how to make those things, don't they? Or have their own way of doing it. So I just thought I'd make them. I, ma I certainly made snippet roll for my music journal, so it wasn't that long ago when I did one. And then, and also I thought I will put some bits of lace on because I do have this beautiful coral pink lace, and I just think it goes so well with the colours, particularly of the birdsong kit. I just thought I, I would put it on. So what I've done, um, I've got one piece of lace, one snippet roll, and one what well, sort of strip of snippet roll, and one ruffle for each signature, and I think that will be that will be fine. That'll be enough. And I'm just going to put it along there and just have it poking out a little bit. So let's go for it. And I've got a couple of little bits I can add if I see any places that look like they need something. I will add a couple of other little things but I don't know if I'll need them now but I'd like to put them on because they were in the kit Just have it sticking out a little bit and then it's visible both sides as well. I like that. Just sticking out enough. Just have to trim off this little bit at the top. I always make them a little bit too long but I'd rather do that <clears throat> than not have quite enough to go to the end. Oops. Oops, I pulled that out a bit. There we go. Right, so that's that piece. Could have put something on here, but I haven't. Where have I? Oh, that was the other thing. Um, I had a couple of places where I'd wrapped around, you know, a couple of wrap around pockets where they had a bit of white showing. So I needed to find something to cover those up. I've been mentioning it all, all the way through. I need to come back and cover them. So I think for this one, I've chosen this nice piece of crochet lace because I think it goes really nicely with the the colour of the background 
and again it'll just poke out a little bit, not very much. But I just like them poking over the edge. little longer than the actual bit I need to cover. I think I did. Just a little bit. There we go. So that's that one. And you can just see it a touch. Just see that little bit of scallop sticking out at the side, which is I like that look. Um, I didn't want it on every blank page. I, I just feel like maybe I want to put a little something up here. I'm not sure. Maybe it's one of those pages I should have done a bit of stamping on or something earlier, but for now I think I might just leave it. So I don't really want too much sticking out the edge, although I've got two bits in this. So I've got this piece, and I'm now wondering whether it actually would be better, because this is a patterned piece, and... This is typical. I, I, I just make these decisions and then I change my mind when I get to them. I wonder whether it would look better on there. This is a little ruffle I made with the. I don't use this little piece of fabric very much, but I thought it went really well with everything else. It almost fit, reaches the, the top and bottom, but I don't mind that it doesn't quite fit. I think I might put it there instead, just because this is so very plain. And the other page I was going to put it on has got a little bit of something going on. Although this is obviously busy on this side, but yeah, I just felt this this one needed it more. I do love a little ruffle. I think I may have put the glue too far down. It doesn't because the ruffle doesn't quite reach to the edge. I might have to I'll stretch it out as much as I can, but I think I might have to just wipe off the glue at the top and bottom where I've gone put a little bit too much on. dry one. Just wipe that at the top and again at the bottom so it doesn't stick to the other page. There we are. Okay, there's the ruffle. I like it there. And then, let's see if there's anything else that needs, needs work. No. This is all fine. Oh yes, so we've got a short page here, a little short um, green page. So it's perfect for a snippet for a snippet round. In fact, I didn't make this one specially. I did actually have this already, and I'm going to just trim it. It's a little bit long. I suddenly remembered I had some snippet roll that I made up long time ago that I'd not used because the colours just didn't go with what I'd been doing up till then. Suddenly I found something that they did go with. There we are. That piece of, probably a piece of doily or something was quite thick, hard to cut through. So yeah, I'm going to put that on there and I like that because it picks up the blue and the pink and all the colours, bit of yellow. So yeah, it works really well on this. But I have made, so the other two pieces of snippet roll that I'm going to use are ones I made specially for this, for this journal.
So this one can stick out because I've got, obviously got a bit of extra room for it and it just makes the page look a little bit wider. But you've still got plenty of writing space here and it looks fine on the other side. It's just plain but that's okay and it's got that nice soft, soft edge like that. Okay, let's move on. Trying to keep a look out for somewhere I can put my two. I'll show you the two little, these two little pieces that came from the, the, the Artemis kit. I'd like to get them on, but I haven't spotted anywhere yet, but I might go back and look again. Not sure where they're going to go. So I have got, I think that's going to go there. Where is it? Is that? All right. I'm going to put it there. I felt that needed something as well. And this little bit is poking out and looks a little rough there. So I'm just going to put that there. Yeah, that works on there quite nicely. So I haven't put the um, the edging in the same place in each signature because different pages need lend themselves to different um, pieces. So this one, whereas the ruffle was at the end of the last signature, it's got it's near the beginning of the first, this one. So it's all fine. It doesn't they don't have to be in any particular order. They have to go where they look like they look like they need to be. And I like that there on the green. There's quite a lot of green in this fabric, and there's and there's the blue in these, and there's blue over here. So yeah, I think it works quite nicely, and it just gives you that little softness. I might pull that out a fraction so you can just see the edge of it on the other side. Yeah. Okay. Just still think looking where there might be um, a need for a little um, but looks like a little cluster doesn't it okay so we have that, that the second piece of plain white um, wraparound piece it was from an envelope that needs covering up so I found this piece of really pretty pink trim and I thought it would look really nice on there with the pink so that's going on there and I shall I shall just cut it just make it a little bit longer than the actual wraparound piece and I'll just pop it there and I really like that on there Upside down, yes, <laughs> yes, that's not the right way up. I think I missed a bit of glue at the bottom. This one on here because I like it opposite the the pink envelope.
also like it on the other side. Now, let's have a think about this this spot. I wonder if these could one of these would look nice on here like that one. Yeah, I think they'd be quite, that would be nice on there. Just as a little bit of decoration pulls across the blue from that side and it looks a bit less plain. So I'm just going to get out my hot glitter glue. feel it needs a little something, a word or something here. Um, and I have been having a look, well I have bought quite a lot of um, word kits just because I felt I didn't have many. Um, and when I started printing some off I found I actually had a kit that I had for ages and I'd completely forgotten I had. Um, with some really useful words on it. So um, it's this kit and it's by an Etsy shop called The Journal Boater. And this comes in about four different colours, these, these uh, pages. But I've just printed off this one, which is in the sort of neutral coffee dyed look. Um, and, I've got, and I've printed it on label paper. And when I cut them out, because I am going to eventually cut them all up and put them in a, in a little book that I'm going to make. Um, and I've done this on the back, just scribbled all over it. So that when I cut them up, I know whether they've got their on label paper or not because sometimes I can't remember, um, especially if it's a long time till to, to, to I use it. Now, where's my scissors gone? Uh, yeah, that's the scissors. Um, yeah, sometimes by the time I use it, I can't remember if they're on label paper or not. And I'm just going to cut out Blossom. Oh, I did see, was there Bloom somewhere as well? Oh, there was Bloom at the end. Maybe I'll go for Bloom rather than Blossom. Yeah, I think I'll go for bloom. I have uh, pages and pages of labels to cut out now. And then I'm going to have to find somewhere to store them. So I think you've all seen my little... me using these little books, which I love, made out of scrapbook paper. And I love using these, just so handy. So I want to make a couple more. And I have, I've got the one that I made with, um, with Rachel for her challenge. And I love that too, but it's um, a lot more work. <laughs> Those little ones, they don't take so long to make and they're easy just to just quickly knock them up. Well, not, I mean, they do take a bit of work because you have to put all the, all the tracing paper or vellum in for the pockets, but uh, the actual books themselves. So there we are, bloom. That looks really nice there. And there's just a little bit of scribble on the back to tell me that that's label paper. The next challenge is try to get it off, of course, the backing off. So yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to want to make a couple more little books to put these labels in, so I might do those on camera. It won't be a, might be an upcoming video um, if anybody is interested in seeing it. Because I know I've made them on camera before, but it was quite a long while ago, and I have got quite a lot of new viewers, which is lovely. So, it's lovely to have you with me, if you're new to my channel, I haven't seen me make those little books before. <clears throat> I might well be doing that in a future video. There we are, just finishes that off. There, I like that. <clears throat> okay, let's carry on. Right, so this is one of my new snippets. Snip it, roll, slip it, strips. Well, I did it on a long strip, which I could have rolled up. It's just on a piece of this, which is that lovely coral uh, fabric that I've had for a long time. But now I've got a new piece that I picked up at my craft club, so I don't have a problem with using that as the backing because it would, if it shows the other side, it's a little bit nicer, isn't it? It's a bit prettier and it goes with everything else. If it's a bit of pink sticking out, so I quite like doing it 
on that. I haven't, I haven't tried doing that before. I've always done it on just plain white. But as I have so much of that lovely pe fabric, or I now have a whole new piece. It's one of my favourite pieces. I've used it more than, more than anything else, I think. Just because it's one of my favourite colours and I've used it um, in quite a few journals. You could easily add more decoration to this, but because I'm, you know, we're getting a bit bulky now, and I just like that pretty edge. I don't think it needs lots of extra. Just, just like that, as a, as a um, ed page edger, it's fine as it is. Just adds a little bit of, bit of colour and a little bit of lace, and I think it looks pretty. And there you are. You can see on the other side that little bit of corally pink sticking out, and I think that works really well. So. Where are we? So have I done? Yeah, I've done all of that signature. So I'm just going to get my book page weight. Just hold that down a bit while we work in the the final signature. This working is a bit of a flip through as well, isn't it? I don't know if I'd need to do a flip through. I might do, because sometimes people just like to see the flip through, don't they? So I might do a flip through another time. I was thinking I might do it as part of this video, but I don't think, I think it would be too long. I'll see. I might do a flip through at the end of this video, if I feel I've got time. Okay, so we have this piece here. Well, I was wondering if actually... Something like this would make it a bit more interesting. Just having that sticking out there. It's such a plain page. Don't think I could I don't think both would work. Would it work with something else? Let's see if it would work with the snippet roll. I could maybe do that instead. Just pop that in here to keep the place. Oh I don't think that goes either, does it? No. What about my I've got a ruffle in here as well somewhere. Or have I already done that? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, it's at the back. Could I put the lace at the back? I'm just thinking the lace on that position is possibly not the best colour. So I could, instead of putting it there, I could put the lace there, which would look better. Okay, just doing a bit of reorganising now. Um, can I put that there for something different? And put the snippet roll. Where were we? We were looking, there was a really plain page, wasn't there? Do -do -do. Where are we? There we are. Would that work with this? Or is it better just to have this and a bit of extra something behind it, maybe? Could I go for a bit of blue lace behind there, just for something different? I know I haven't used any of the blue lace, but I have. that is the colour I, I need, I think. Just put a bit of this. And actually, I think it's the same as this one, so that would be quite nice. Maybe I'll just put a bit of that, not down the edge, but just to back, back that width. Or maybe I would, would it go down the edge? No, it's too much. I just did a little bit there. Have that poking out just a little, a little bit, just a touch, and that little bit. Let's try it because I'm quite. Quite like this on here. And 
I don't think I need as much. I don't think I need all of this. Do I? <laughs> See, making decisions as I go slows everything down, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Just have that sticking out a little bit. There. Have that there. No, I like that. I think that just makes this page look a bit more interesting. There we are. Now I've got to find somewhere to put the last bits now, haven't I? Shouldn't be too hard. Plenty of options. Hang on, make sure I get the, the height right. Now I want to get the width right. Snippet, or oh, not snippet, whatever it's called, cluster, I suppose. It's the faux cluster, isn't it? That uh, came with the Artie Mays watercolor, spring watercolor kit. There's only one thing left to do, and that's to add a nice word, like I did on the other one. I'm going to go back to my sheet of words, and I have got spring here, so I'm going to snip that out. And let's see. So you've got a line across where I've done my scribble, so I know it's on label paper. And I've just got to release the backing. Wondering if I need to put any extra glue. Can I do it just? I'll just try and keep it on the yeah, on the on the paper bit so I don't have to add more glue. There we are. So there we are, that's that nice little I'm glad I've got those two on because I like those. And that little bit of blue shows the other side, and there's a bit of blue here, so that's quite nice. So I've just got to find a home for my snippet roll now so I could still put that on here now I've figured out it doesn't really work on that bit I just did <laughs> brains going so and also I like the fact that it's got some blue in it which we can pull in the blue from this side so I'm going to use that end rather than the other end yeah I'm going to put this on here again because I like the the fact that it's that bit wider. So I just need to trim it here. Now I've got a little um, kind of clustery thing I can put in my cluster book, which I did with some other leftover bits of snippet. Okay. 
This is all being I glued them on first, glued on to the backing fabric just with some glue stick and then I've just sewn down the middle of them zigzag. That's all I've done with these and that holds them all in place. That's fine, like that. I'm happy I was able to use it on there in the end. And so we've still got somewhere to put my Um, ruffle and my lace. So originally, where was the lace? The lace was going to go somewhere else, wasn't it? And I ended up changing that. Where was I going to put it? And I decided I didn't like it there, didn't I? Oh, I think that was going to go here. That was what it was. So I need to find another home for it. I'm just wondering whether something needs to go on this side. This is also very plain. This would this um this would have gone really well here too. Um I'm wondering whether a bit of this on this side. No, it doesn't quite work for me. Even though I like it on the other side. Maybe I can put this lace here because we have now got a bit of pink on here. Maybe that's what I will do. Yeah, I think so. And then the ruffle, where's the ruffle going to go? Ruffle can go here. Yeah. Yep, I think that works all right. Okay, here we go. And we've got a bit of extra colour on this side as well. Not got a problem with that. This is quite sticky, so I'm a bit worried about it. Might when it will stick to the page. Okay, make sure nothing else is like that has stuck. <laughs> we may have to just go back and check some of our lace. Make sure it hasn't. Yeah, well, this one has a little bit. There we go. Doesn't take much to just release it though. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that one as well. And then we'll go right to the back here for our ruffle. And then that'll be it. Stretch it out a little bit, make sure it covers. There we go. And there's my little ruffle. I love, I do love a fabric ruffle. 
and I think that goes really well here just before the end so you just feel you haven't got a lot of, a lot of um, blank space but plenty of writing space if you want it so that's it she's done she's all finished oops losing my, losing my labels so there we are okay I'm going to tie her up well I was going to tie her up but actually how are we doing for time have I got time to do my flip through not really I will do a separate flip through video in the near future just for anybody who likes to have a, a look in more detail at every everything who don't necessarily want to watch the whole process I think there are people who just like to see that and then if they're interested they can go back and watch bits so I'll do that another time so I'm going to tie her up for now as best I can because she's Right, so now I think I need to trim these off a bit because they are, even though she's tied up, they are a bit, a bit too long. I'm never sure how, how much you're going to need. But I don't think I need quite as much of this. So let's just trim off these tails a bit. see which ones I've got okay I might need to trim a little bit more afterwards but there she is she's all done I'm really pleased with her I, th I think I've, I've had a lo lovely time making this this journal I love all the colors um, and I just really I've really enjoyed it so thank you for joining with me and if you've been with me for the whole of the, of the journey of this journal Thank you for sticking with it and I'll see you again soon with something new. No idea what. Bye for now.